and welcome to another poetry reading with me, with me your truly the shoebox poet Clarence Plank. I'm here for you. Yes, you. You out there who enjoys poetry. Yes, I am here for you. Yes. And today we are still reading from Finding Peace Within the Storm, my first book that was published over five years ago. And we're coming up on the uh, book anniversary. We well, had the uh, book anniversaries for other books. The next one won't be until October, which is the uh, writer, no, which is writer of wrongs. So here we go. This first poem called "Man." Even though I am dying inside because I never, I can never be the man you want me to be. I struggle with everything, just trying to make everything right, and it falls apart around me. Trying to do the best I can with all that I have, and I pray every day just to be the man you need me to be, because I love you. So I will get everything just to be with you, sacrifice everything to be the man you want me to be. So this poem was written about my ex, uh, fiance, and you see, as a man, the way society is, it says we post to sacrifice for our families, for our for the relationships and everything, because that's what we do. We sacrifice. Now, let me tell you something about sacrifice. Sacrifice usually works when somebody else is willing to do the same with you. And when the other person on the other side of that relationship doesn't do the same thing, it becomes one-sided. You see, I stayed in the relationship because I felt that, you know, she would change or things would work out. In the actuality, that was my um, my trauma and my things that I dealt with when I was younger to in not realizing that I deserve better from in a, being in a relationship that somebody needs to meet me halfway. So even though I'm saying here everything falls apart around me, I get the blame because I'm the man. When everything falls apart. But the thing of it is though. You got to have somebody else over there. That's willing to do the things. And when you got somebody over there. That's willing to do it. But the other person is not doing it. It's chaos. There's nothing you can do about it. Except let the other person go. And. <clears throat> even though you know. For what it was. She did the right thing. She left. Because I see a lot of different reasons. Or there are other things that could have happened. And I could have been in worse things than I am right now. So I'm glad she left. Five years ago, or so many years ago, I wouldn't have seen it like that. You know, I wouldn't have. But here we are. This next poem is called The Last Dance. I say, the last dance I say for you. One last dance meant for you, just for you and I. As we forget our worries, one last dance between the two of us. Moving closer just to touch. This last dance I say for you. While in the corner a jukebox still plays our song as the lights have slowly turned up. We find ourselves alone in the dark. For one last time with my arm with you in my arms for one last dance meant for two. And uh, this poem was is based uh, well, or was inspired by the song Remember When by um, But he did a song, Remember When, and um, uh, for me, that song, I really enjoyed that song, and it, it inspired me to write this poem. Now, as I said, these are a lot of poems, these things right here, this, I mean, that song came out a long time ago. So, this next poem is called Gone. I'm going to miss you when you're gone. Miss your smile, and the way you feel in my arms, we're going our separate ways. There are so many reasons I could think of to make you stay, yet I know unha how ha unhappy you will be. Even though I may talk to my friends about what I, I will do when you're gone, I can't even imagine myself being in those shoes. I finally found someone I really care for. Then again, I find myself saying goodbye. If you must go, I want to say I'll miss you. I have to say you changed me, and with this I say thank you. Now, I don't remember who this was about. And it's it's uh it's kind of funny that, cause you see there's a lot of people that I've met in my life, and some people were worth the ink that I wrote these poems for. 
And then there are some that really shouldn't been written. Anything shouldn't been written. Nothing shouldn't have been written about them. They shouldn't be known. But you see, the wonderful thing is, is that I really don't talk about much about who these poems are about to give them that life. But I'm thinking that you know, for so many, you know, there's many people that do go out of your life. And that's why I'm thinking that this right here was written that way. Um, that you know, people want to go, just let them go. If you don't hold them, you just let them go. And they come back, they come back. If they don't, they don't. This next poem is called "Surrender." The first time I looked into your eyes, I felt like I'd do any of anything. I felt like surrendering was easy. But I've learned letting go is even harder. Giving in to all the hurt, surrender everything, was the hardest thing I could ever do. After I looked into your eyes and seen every dream you dream, I felt like I'd do anything. I gave you my heart and felt so alone once you walked away. Oh, surrendering all my love for you was the hardest feeling. And things like that it's like you know you, you give everything you surrender all yourself to fall in love with somebody and then they uh, you know they just walk away and and that and that becomes a, a, a difficult pro thing to process in your life um, now who could it be I mean it's just basically the same way with the gone and surrender I mean you know even though I wrote these poems and some of these are like over 20 something years old so you know the, the understanding of what the concept was when I first wrote these is, you know, definitely beyond me because I have moved past those, those uh, that hurt. So. Motionless is the next poem. Beating on the surface, waiting to break free, and the ship seemed motionless on the ocean of blue. I could feel myself beginning to thirst for air under the water, just beating on the surface, seeing the reflection in my water. Everything seems to be blurred. As I drift in the water, the sky slowly changes to night and I see you standing by the water's edge, like a ghost stepping out in the mist. I'm beating on the surface trying to break through to you, wanting to hold just hold you, uh, holding, uh, wanting to hold, uh, to hold you, should be a human there, just to be with you. My eyes cannot focus from beyond uh, being underwater. You touch the water, it will surge through the surface. I reach for your hand and felt the touch. My sorrow turns to joy as I broke in the surface of your heart. There was a, a guy who did this video, and um, I can't, no, I don't remember who he is. I've been looking for it, I can't find it. But he ends up falling through this mud, uh, this puddle in the ocean, or in the uh, street, and he's sitting there seeing this woman walking by, and he's just mesmerized by her, and he's wishing that she would reach into the, and try to help him. It's been so long since I've seen that thing, so I don't know if I could like that that's really what the thing was, because it was just so long ago. So, uh, we're going to end it here. So, go on over to the Spine Bookshop. They're having a banned books week. It says probably last week. So, you know, but you can probably get in there and, and get you some, a banned book still. I'm pretty sure she has a lot. Or, you know, donate to the uh, banned books to keep books from being banned. Um, I understand the different things for be, uh, books being, uh, different reasons for books being uh, not held in the curriculum for a uh, for for schools or stuff for libraries. I understand that. I get that. Um, but we really shouldn't ban books overall that people cannot have access to be able to read. Some books should be read. Other books shouldn't be read. So, but there is a fine line between understanding which of the two. So. Oh, okay. Now. Check out my friends, uh, Jenna Jinks Portraits, on uh, Instagram and her Facebook and her uh, her page, uh, Jenna Jinks uh, Portraits .com. My friend uh, Dwight and his solo dolo uh, games over on YouTube. He has been posting videos uh, regularly, whether it's his college or of Madden. Also, check out my friends uh, Aria and. Re Alberta and their Reiki sessions. They're definitely going to do that. Check out their websites. 
and let's see, um, as I said, it's Fine Bookshop. Cast it into the Far Podcast, check them out, and they're all their podcasts. Hopefully, they'll be doing the podcast pretty soon. Uh, Sarah Aikenhead, Bill Ronald Miller, and Sherry Aikenhead, I mean, they are wonderful and talking about different uh, things that they cover between the Lord of the Rings, uh, Game of Thrones, or Song of Ice and Fire. Uh, so, but y'all take it easy. Have a good day. Um, I will be on October 26th and 27th. Well, October 26th, I will be at the Southern Festival of Books in Nashville. And next year, I'll be at the Arthur's Convention in Smyrna. So definitely come out and check out. And I will definitely, hopefully, have be getting out more often to be able to do stuff via sub books. So y'all have a good one. Take it easy. Bye.